Hello, my friends. I am here in Acton, Massachusetts at the Methods Precision Center. It is a one-of-a-kind facility in the whole of North America. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I'm about to. Follow me inside and let's get a tour. Well, we're gonna talk in detail with my friend Bill about these robo drills, the operations they're doing today, and how they might be able to benefit you as well. So Bill, let's talk about this first machine to your right. What's it doing and what are some of its capabilities? Well, this is a robo drill uh, with a DDR on it. So we can do all, all sides of the machine, uh, of the part in one operation. Actually, this one's two operations. We go from one vice to the other vice, but it machines all sides. So we get five of the sides on one, and then we flip it to get the back side of the other. So that's, that's one thing. And now we have, during this uh, demo, we have dynamic milling going on, which is a cooling factor for the chips that we create, so we don't create hot chips and wear out the tool quicker. You'll see that we use uh, dry cutting on several of the tools, um, which is fine for this application. Uh, we also have a ball end mill that does a very slight step over to create a, a really nice finish in a pocket. And that's about it for that demo. So many of us already know how great the robo drill is for speed. We know it has quick tool changes. We know it has quick feed rates. But you're also cutting steel today, is that correct? Absolutely. Yep. So in cutting steel and transitioning out of aluminum and steel, what's the cycle time comparison with a BT30 spindle like you have in the robo drill? Well, uh, they're both pretty close. I'd say the aluminum is just a bit faster because it's, a, it's an easier material to cut. But with the dynamic milling we're doing with the steel, it's, it's pretty close. So now we are with Dan from Methods Machine and this is MTD Global. We are going to get a bit more into the automation that goes with these FANUC robo drills. Dan, could you tell us a little bit more about this setup and how it works exactly? Yep. So uh, what we're showing here is our new JSC Pro system, which our R&D group developed. Um, we're showing it here with a conveyor style in-feed, out-feed. This system has been designed to be completely modular so you can use it with a left-hand machine, a right-hand machine, or a twin cell configuration, as well as we have the conveyor in-feed and out-feed. We also are working on developing a drawer in-feed and out-feed and a lazy Susan. That sounds remarkable. I need yep. to learn more about each of those. Yep. And each of these systems, they're not so customed anymore, are they? Um, no, not so much. So what we're really trying to target here is a more standard automation system. And the goal with this is, you know, it has your pre-configured uh, in-feed and out-feed choices that you can pick from. And what we're trying to do is build these for stock and inventory them for a quicker turnaround to our customer, as well as a much easier setup and use for the end user as well. Right, so we no longer, well, we will from time to time always need to do custom jobs. Yes, yep. But this is now built for a more user-friendly experience where they can more or less get it off the shelf and adapt it to an existing robo drill. Yep, yeah, more user-friendly, yep. You can add it to an existing robo drill. And um, yeah, like we said, just you know, being able to put it next to a robo drill, plug it in, you set a few points, it has all uh, setup programs already programmed in. We even have a probe that we can use as the end of arm tool to teach all of our frames within the robot world. And then everything is just uh, press and go on the robo drill side. So in theory, if I buy into a job that's say, 1,000, 50,000 parts and I knock that job out and the next bid that I win happens to be completely different but I can still automate it, I can pretty easily switch out this one system and pop in a new system. Yep, so you can either switch it out or if you know your next part still you can utilize the conveyor. All you have to do is go in and reprogram um, a couple of points, let it know how many lanes, let it know the part size, the height, your work holding and it takes care of 99% of that reprogramming for you. You just go in, clean up a couple of robot points, and then you'll be up and running with your next job. We're going to discuss a little bit more about this MV1000H and its significant benefits of rigidity and being able to cut harder materials. Matt, can you tell us a little bit more about this machine? Of course. So the MV1000H 
is a part of our methods line of machines. We developed this machine line a couple years ago to really help fill our product portfolio and uh, deliver to customers machines that we help think will help their productivity. So this machine very specifically is a three axis vertical machining center. It's a hybrid boxway, which uh, it's a hybrid machining center. So it's a boxway in the Z, linear in the XY. So on this machine, you'll see we have, it's a 15,000 RPM, 40 taper machine. And what we have today set up is we have two demos that we set up specifically for the die mold industry. So we have one that really focuses on the power and the direct drive spindle and the heavy cuts that this machine can take. And the other one is focusing, uh, it's a crankshaft mold showing the absolute amazing finish that we can do on these machines. So we've talked about this a little bit more previously. When we talk about the rigidity of something, if it's not rigid enough, we get chatter especially when we get to those harder materials. So we do have some parts coming off of here that have brilliant finish due to that increased rigidity of that 40 taper machine. So a lot of the rigidity goes back to the way it's built and we've worked really closely with our partner Litz High Tech to make sure that these machines came out with the standards and specs that we had in mind. So it's a very heavy machine. Uh, the, the box way and the Z is a really big part of that uh, rigidity as well. Uh, well, boxways are known to be kind of the meat and potatoes, so they say, of creating stability, a stable foundation for a machine that needs to cut harder materials. Um, so it's really great that you're able to work so closely with your partner to create exactly what you want for the U.S. market. Yeah, and I mean, Litz has been a great partner for us, and with all of the methods of machines, it's about, they're packed with standard features that really make it so our customers can get this machine in and it's already ready to go and make uh, cuts right on their floor. Um, so one of the big benefits to this machine as well is the Fanuc Zero IMF control, which really, with the 200 block look ahead, and that really helps when programming these, these either deep cuts or really precise, uh, accurate cuts with these great finish. This is a one-of-a-kind facility in North America, the first of its kind, and I'm here with Matt Myers today who's gonna tell us a little bit more. Matt, can you tell us a little bit more about this amazing facility? Yeah, Tony, so welcome. So here at the Methods uh, Precision Center up in Acton, Mass, this is the facility is the first of its kind in North America. We developed this facility uh, to really help prove out challenging test cuts to our customers. Because when you have some of the most accurate machines in the world like Nakamura and Yazda, uh, when people have these really tough, challenging test cuts, or really tight tolerance test cuts, historically people have had to send their um, send the test cuts off to Germany or Japan to where they do have facilities that are fully climate controlled and we wanted to have a more control of that ourselves and give more access to customers in North America to those types of facilities. So that's why in 2018, 2019 we built out this facility that we opened in 2019. So inside of this facility it is 10,000 square feet that is fully climate controlled. Uh, inside of that 10,000 square feet Feet. We have the 4,000 square feet in our precision center lab that we're currently standing in. So inside this lab, we're controlling the air temperature, pressure, and humidity. The air temperature in this room doesn't change more than half a degree at any point. Each one of our machines are actually standing on an isolation pad, and these pads are reinforced uh, by steel reinforcements vertically and horizontally to completely minimize any uh, vibrations. So if we're running five machines at once or a forklift is driving by outside, there will be absolutely zero interference with the machines and their, uh, their cutting. And we're going to learn a bit about this Yazda PX30i. Colin, can you tell us a little bit about what this machine is doing and some of the benefits? Absolutely. So welcome to Acton. Uh, glad to have you here. So. The PX30 is a machine that combines incredible precision with the automation and reliability of a lights out machine. So that's the idea behind it is you've got the Yazda precision and reliability combined with, you know, in this case of this particular machine option the way it is, 513 tools and 33 pallets. That is impressive. And when we're talking about accuracy, Yazda is very well known for that, but how accurate are these machines? 
So this particular machine's got a resolution of 0.1 microns. So when we're talking in terms of accuracy down at that level, not the machine is certainly capable of holding super tight tolerances, but then you've also got a bunch of other forces working against you. So you've got the heat that's being generated by the cut itself. You've got the temperature of the coolant. You've got the air temperature, and you've got you know any uh, material handling that you're doing. So if you're holding a piece of metal in your hand and your hand's 98 degrees and the metal 70 degrees, you're going to get that temperature differential. So in our case, we're in our precision lab and we hold the temperature of this room to basically less than half a degree Fahrenheit over a 24 hour period. So by having that incredibly tight control over the temperature, we're able to hold some really, really tight uh, precision tolerances with this machine. And part of uh, proving that to our customers is we actually have our Zeiss CMM just over my shoulder here in the same room, but completely isolated on a different pad. So the idea behind that is we're using, we're measuring in the same environmental conditions as we're cutting. So different, different actual machine doing the measuring, which is you know, an important part of validation, but we're able to hold very, very tight tolerances um, for our customers in this room and hopefully show them what it takes to do the same in their facility. Uh, and you know, depending on what kind of tolerances they've got to hold, they may not need to go to quite this level, but by going to this level of you know, extreme HVAC control, you really get the ability to dial in the exact temperature that everything is being cut and measured at.